two, and three. We are live. We are Jeff and Jaren from Woodland Park, Colorado. Hello. Yeah. Forgive me, I've got a little throat and nasal thing going on. So I may have to go with my radio voice. Hi, we are Jeff and Jaren Thompson. We are Kingdom Stability and Simplicity Ministries. Enjoying the day. We've had some beautiful weather here in Woodland Park. We've had a goodly amount of snow. We have. But yeah. sunshine today. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful sunshine. Yeah. And living Hi, it. Sylvia. Living it, loving it. Hey, little sister. And before we get to the actual teaching part of things, we've got some business to take care of. It doesn't have to do with our next mission trip to Africa. Stop. <laughs> now, anybody who's who kind of has kind of kept us with kept up with us of late. Uh, we were able to do a couple of live broadcasts with Prophet Dillis Chi and have enjoyed that very thoroughly. Very much. She's, she's become a very good friend. Um, mm -hmm. And just as iron sharpens iron, God puts people in your life for your next transition, your next phase, whatever. And um, God has connected Dillis and us together. And so yeah. we just wanted to make sure everybody knew about her book. Um, and... We can do this. The Prophetic Blueprint. Um, it is just a great resource um, in what the prophetic, how the prophetic should be walked out. And um, agreed, Sylvia, we do need yes. to get together also. It's been on our heart, little sister. And, um, but the Prophetic Blueprint is just a great way to walk out the prophetic with character and integrity, balanced with the voice of God. And so it's one of the, I think the thing that, I really enjoyed the most about it. Um, it didn't hey, Festo. didn't shy away from the refining portion of hearing no. from God, the intimacy portion of hearing from God, or the um, the balance of responsibility mm -hmm. versus action versus the freedom of walking in in the spirit of God mm -hmm. and hearing from him clearly. So she did a phenomenal job with the yeah. book. So we highly recommend yes. The Prophetic Blueprint. The Prophetic Blueprint by Dillis Chi. And you can find it on Amazon. Uh, you can also get it in Kindle mm -hmm. if you like to read that way. Uh, very good. And when I first started reading it, I thought I wrote it. <laughs> but as we had, as even what we had said last week, that accountability and integrity needs to be at the forefront, uh, especially in the prophetic world, because people's lives are at mm -hmm. stake here. But of all of our lives, too. Mm -hmm. So, so anyway, progressing into... Yeah, as we, as we transition now, <laughs> it seems like life has been, the last decade's been nothing but one long transition. It's a true statement. But it's, it's, it's been good, loving it. Simple title is The Places of Remembrance, and... Excuse me. It's we 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 receive a word from the Lord, and we receive a task, a vision, a a promise, and man, when you know when the when that when we first receive it, you know, Hallelujah, glory to God. I am I am. Oh yeah, we're going to fulfill this, and we have our times where it seems to go either. Uh, either slow or non-existent mm -hmm. and you're going man come on you know when is this going to happen it's been i know in my case i was given dreams and visions when i was a wee lad <laughs> and i'm still not there yet it's been a mere 40 50 years yeah you know, just, so. but you but you keep but you keep going and you always have to place those places and those words and those times of remembrance there yeah. and we'll get into that a little bit we have three great scripture references here um, the most popular, of course, is Psalm 77, verses 11 through 12. And this is from the New Living. I like the way it says it. But then I, I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. Amen, Amen to that. Because we, we, we've all had dark times, dark places, mm -hmm. and, and, and victories, and and. and and those, those triumphs that, you know, man, we couldn't have done it without the Lord. Uh, our, next, our next one here, and this is where people who are not familiar with the Lord or familiar with his way can get a little, is God double-minded? 
Uh, this is Isaiah chapter 46, verses 8 through 11. This is from the English Standard Version. Remember this and stand firm. Recall to mind, you transgressors. And he's also he's talking to Israel and to Israel's enemies here. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose, calling a bird of prey from the east, the man of my counsel from a far country. I have spoken, and I will bring it to pass. I have purposed, and I will do it. Amen. And... The next, our, our third one is Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. Pulled this from the New Living Translation just, uh, just because it's very plain. The Lord says, but forget all of that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. So... Mm -hmm. We're, anybody who doesn't know the word of the Lord or doesn't know the Lord's ways, now wait a second, God says to remember, but then he says, ah, forget about it, I'm doing something better. So which is it? Both. Yes, <laughs> it is. And it's, the Lord, the Lord always wants us to keep his, his, his magnificence in front of us. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not because the Lord has a huge ego. He doesn't need us, mm -mm. but yet he does need us. And that's that partnership. Hi, Shelly. Thank you for joining us. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's being at that place, you know. Anytime I get down, I remember what the Lord's brought me through. Mm -hmm. um, most of us have seen things we shouldn't have seen or experienced things that we probably may or may not have wanted to experience. But the Lord was always there walking us through. Amen. Always lifting us up. Amen. And so... Getting back to getting back to the vision, but we we excuse me, I, I back let me backtrack a minute. Sorry. <laughs> it's that, your brain's going faster than your <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Hold on, but, download, download. <laughs> but as we receive those things from God and we start pursuing, there's so many times that um, I'm sorry. that as we pursue the word of the Lord, we get we get caught up in pursuing the word coming to pass versus pursuing God. Right. And that's where we have to really, when things get confusing or complicated or when we, when God tells us, hey, remember what I have said, it's to remember what he has said, not necessarily mm -hmm. the word itself, if that makes any sense, mm -hmm. because so many times we can put the promise, we can put the word above, above our savior, above the one who gave us the word, above the one who gave us the promise. Right. And so, so many times, please remind yourself, hey, Richard. Hey, Richard. Remind yourself to go back to the one who gave you the word, mm -hmm. not to the word itself. Because when you encounter confusion or you encounter chaos or disappointment or disheartenment, it's because you put your trust in something like the right. word coming to pass right. versus the one who gave you the word. Right. And we've been in meetings and, and, and situations where the word of the Lord has been spoken over mm -hmm. us. And we do something in what God has directed us to do in that fulfillment. And in other people's eyes, it's like, no, 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 you can't do that. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, that's, that's not what the prophecy said. Hold on. Who's listening to the Lord here? And who is it for? Mm -hmm. It was for us. And we do seek the Lord in these things. And down the road, you kick it a little bit, six, 12 months down the road, and somebody, the ones who told you, well, you can't do that, are the ones that say, you know, it's that would work out pretty good that you that you guys did what you did, and oh yeah, and it's not an ego thing, but oh looky looky who hears from God. But those are the things we remember. It's what you know in Psalm like forty two, forty three, forty four. When when David's, I just picture him kind of doing a soliloquy where he's standing in front of a mirror and going, "Soul, why are you so disheartened? Why are you so discouraged?" Mm -hmm. We have to encourage ourselves, Amen. but we don't encourage ourselves in the things we want to come to pass. We encourage ourselves in knowing who God is. Right. And that's the main difference of when we lose momentum or, um, hi Grant. Hi Grant. Of when we save, lose. Save me a slice, will you please? <laughs> when we lose momentum and when we lose that fire and that intensity 
that intimacy inside of us is because we're pursuing something other than God. And I yeah. know for me, that's that simple trigger, mile marker, like, hey, here's your clue. You're not doing something right. And that's where I think that remember, but no, I really haven't done anything yet. So just wait and see. Right. Thank you for balancing me on this. Hey, you're welcome. I got in a rush. I know. I know. Go, go figure. I know. Your heart got excited. Yeah. And so many times in our case, it's been, and the Lord has spoken to us, hey, go here or get ready to. Mm -hmm. And you're, the human side of us is, is always, Lord, when are we finally going to have our home? When are we going to finally be at a place where we can lay the stakes down, where we can put our name on the, mm -hmm. on the gate and all those things? Yeah. And he keeps promising. He keeps saying very, very, very soon. So hallelujah for that. And that will come to pass. And I guess just because we've done it so much, it's true. We are very good at it. Jaren especially is very, very good. She can have the house ready to go in less than forty-eight hours if need be. Strength and a weakness. Yeah. God says go, and I'm like, house is packed, and he's like, in a year, I'm giving you a year's notice, and I'm like, okay, I'll unpack. <laughs> okay, but everything's still boxed yeah. up ready, just in case, in case that new thing happens. <laughs> but. But people who do not understand the commitment that you've made for the kingdom, you know, well, you guys sure jump around a lot. You're gypsies, you're nomads, you're, no, we're obedience, what we are. And it's, it's a Southern United States thing, but you get that, bless your little hearts. Um, it is. You guys got your little ministry, <laughs> bless you. You're just so good, which interpreted says, you poor little losers. <laughs> but the thing is, what we, when God says go and we go, when God says do and we do, and other people don't understand, a lot of that comes down to it's your call, it's not theirs. Why mm. would they understand your call? Why would they mm. understand your path to walk? Why would they understand? Your gifting. Yeah, it, it's not theirs, it's yours. And that's where that intimacy with God, and I'm gonna use you as an example, okay? There's so many times Jeff, in his amazing sense of humor, just gets misunderstood. Is that a true statement? It's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it gets misunderstood, but because I'm intimate with him, and I know him in and out, and I know his heart, that it's no big deal for me to go, to go. oh, he was just being sassy, or oh, he was just being sarcastic, or oh, he was just, I was like, just. They don't know that you're joking. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I've said that many times. But so many times, because they're not intimate with him, they don't know his heart the way I do, his words or his actions get misinterpreted or get taken wrong. But mm -hmm. it's the same thing in our walk with God, because we are the ones intimate with God in our relationship. People aren't going to understand what God is telling us to do. People right. aren't going to understand that, um, you know, God wouldn't tell you to do that. You know, God wouldn't tell you to give away everything that you had. God wouldn't tell you to uproot, you know, the last decade of your life. God wouldn't. But here's the thing. We submitted to God and we said, God, we are, we're all in and we're willing. So God's told us to do some pretty extreme stuff, but where he's called us to be, mm -hmm. we're keeping in front of us. Mm -hmm. So we remember and we pursue and that remembrance helps the momentum right. of that pursuit. Right. So, um, and we dealt with this a second ago, <laughs> but it, but it is the visionaries and the prophets, the seers and the and the planners. Oh wow, those those don't seem to go together in most situations. But the planners, we're always looking ahead to the next thing, mm -hmm. uh, the next mountain, the next the next conquest. Yeah. What is what's the next vision, Lord? What's the next dream? What's the next task? And <clears throat> excuse me going back, visionaries. Mm -hmm. And we've worked with a lot of visionaries who don't even know what day it is, seems like, because, oh, well, well, they're just visionaries. They're always thinking ahead. Again, they don't know what day it is because they're thinking so far ahead and they have no idea even where they're at in the visions. And But what and, have you learned? Oh, well, I'm, I'm getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to that. But it's, but it's, also, it's also being a planner. If you don't have, if you don't have planners, <coughs> visions never come to pass. I mean, straight up, and and that's why, for those who who need it, 
uh, in the book of Habakkuk, we, you know, he says, write it down, make it plain, mm -hmm. plan it. <laughs> but with the flexibility and freedom of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And so many times we don't understand the call of visionaries because we're more planners <laughs> in our eyes because that's not the call God has called us to, just like we were talking about a while ago. But yet it's balanced with being able to see afar off mm -hmm. while you live in the present, yeah. while you have the, the freedom to move in the spirit with an organized plan. Mm -hmm. And it's just, but it's all making room for those detours and those interweavings and those connections that God's going to be doing along the way. Right. And so it's just a really fine balance of, of yes, God, we can see afar off, but we're not going to miss the present mm -hmm. while we, you know, all of those things. Right. It's getting to that. No, I know. I know, but, but it is, it, but to a fault, um, looking back is not how you're built. Mm -hmm. uh, some people love to reminisce and, you know, there's times to look back and say, look, you know, great. You know, yeah, it was, those were fun times. But it, the, most visionaries and, and people who look so far ahead, we rarely enjoy the day that we live in. We, we have a hard time enjoying the moment. Uh, personally, well I have improved in this <laughs> dramatically. Only because you're, you're always looking. You're always going ahead. And, and I do. I love to think. I like to see things. As the Lord reveals, 5, 10, 25, two, three generations down the road of, of what the Lord is going to do. But it's, again, you have, you, you have a hard time enjoying even, even the moment of things. Hey, bro, loosen up a little bit. Oh, yeah, well, I was, I was, I was thinking about something. Well, stop thinking. And I've had to tell myself this. Mm -hmm. uh, it is how we're wired. But, but we have to... We have to enjoy today. And this is where our places of remembrance come in. Mm -hmm. uh, we, have to, we have to keep this life enjoyable. We have to keep it fun. And that's not a word that's just kicked around in the ecclesia these days. It's fun. Mm -hmm. but, but we have to make it fun. We have to, we have to love life. Uh, and and we, we can lose our heart and, and things can get a little stale. Mm -hmm. Because processes can take a long time. Yeah. Sherry, can you amen to that? Testifying. Hear from the Lord, make the move, processes take a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but, and when those things happen, we do need our places of retreat where we can recall and we can recapture that fire that mm -hmm. God put in us. But we have, we have to remember the times when, when the voice of the Lord was so strong over us Mm -hmm. and, and, and those, those goosebumpy moments, those places where our hearing goes somewhere into the heavenly realms, our, our vision is, you, you get that look on your face, but it's because the Lord is speaking. Yeah. And, and it's because those voices are going to come to us and say, did you really hear from the Lord on it's this? It's not working out quite like you thought, is it? Mm. Is this really what the plan of the Lord Bless is? Bless your hearts. Yeah. <laughs> but yet, you got a call from God. You got a word from God on something that made you take a drastic move. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to rem remember mm -hmm. is are something God said inspired you, was a cataclysmic explosion in some form or fashion that made you jump mm -hmm. and did it. And then all of a sudden now you're in it You've made the move, and you're like, "This is it. This well, is all there is." Well, we're here, but that but that is where we we need our our personal landmarks, mm -hmm. our personal monuments that yes. that remind us of what the Lord said. Um, <clears throat> going, and I, and I like to say it. You know, I don't look back that much. I don't look back except to see where I came from and why I act like I do. And well, and it's just simply put, our yesterdays built our todays. Amen to that. I'm grateful for our yesterdays, no matter how, mm -hmm. how they were. Right, and we, we love to quote from The Hobbit, uh, Gandalf and Thorin, you know, where did you go? Looking ahead. So why did you come back looking behind? It's true. And, and, that's, and that's keeping that good balance. Mm -hmm. uh, people who journal, 
and people who write things down may have a better grasp of it. Personally, I'm not much of a journaler. Yeah, neither one of us are. But whenever it needs to be brought to remembrance, Holy Spirit is really quick to do that. Mm -hmm. And he'll just say, remember. Or if, or if a decision comes, you know, which direction do we go? He'll bring it mm -hmm. immediately. Put it in my mind's eye and say, okay, this, mm -hmm. this is why I showed you this. Correct. Decision made. Yep. Easy peasy. But I don't think we're journalers, journalers as much as we are. We'll create that mile marker. We'll create a visual remembrance. Because I know when we came up to Woodland Park the first time, um, and then we went back to Oklahoma, we got some, I think they were technically Christmas decorations, but we just use them as nightlights. Um, but they're trees that are flocked with snow. Well, that's what eight, nine months out of our year looks like sometimes. And so it was one of the most beautiful things I ever got to experience when we lived up here the first time. So it was a remembrance for me to have that in my home back in Oklahoma about what the Lord had said and where we were going to end up. Mm -hmm. And so journaling, I think, looks different for everybody, that remembrance portion of things, because sometimes it is written words, but sometimes, too, it's like a visual here, every time you look mm -hmm. at this, you're going to remember what God has told you. Every right. time you look at this, you're going to put the word of God into right. action and confess and know the Lord has spoken, even if it doesn't look like it's walk being walked out right now. Right. And some people can do it. I'm mm -hmm. not one of those people that can go back two or three years in journals and, and, yeah. and do that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It's not me. I, well, it, and, but we're just not wired that Correct. way. Correct. Um, but we do. But still... Personally, we need we do need to keep our own personal records, our memorials, our 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 markers, mm -hmm. if you will. And hi, Pastor. And are we going to have doubts? Oh yeah. We're going to face uncertainties. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And I love I love the way the Lord had said this. <laughs> Welcome to the Forerunners Hall of Fame, <laughs> because. We're all, we are all going to experience it. Mm -hmm. Even even the most seasoned among us who, when God said we do and Lord is always mm -hmm. faithful because each step keeps getting taller, each vision keeps getting yep. bigger. And you're going, okay, is, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but I also remember too, uh, a, a pastor who was from the Houston, Texas area and a lot of respect for him. He's since gone home to be with the Lord. He had built something that was just, had never been done, a, a building, a structure for his church. And he said, you know, and he was in his 80s then. And he said, you know, one day I was looking at it and I'm just, I'm thanking God and marveling at what, mm -hmm. what God did. And, but then I stopped to think and I got sad. Why did you get sad? I didn't have another vision to go. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any, I didn't have an, had not received a vision from the Lord of what to do next. And so it broke my heart. Yeah. And it, it wasn't too many, too many years after that, that he, that he passed on. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how that works other than just keep moving forward. Uh, I refuse to stop. If I'm mm -hmm. done building mine, I'm going to help somebody build theirs. Because mm -hmm. we're pretty good at that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we got all of our training. <laughs> yeah. But, but when we do face those doubts and we do face those uncertainties, mm -hmm. that's when we have to remind ourselves, you know what? I know that I know that I know I heard the Lord on this. Amen. In that moment, that was God. No, no force mm -hmm. in, in, in earth or hell or anywhere else could, could have done what the Lord did yeah. in that moment. Yep. And it's and it's something that you're gonna fight for. You're going to you're not gonna not let go of it because it's a part of heaven that's been Amen. attached to you. Amen. And all right, I got a little excited. No, it's good. But but those voices can also be used as a leverage in your favor. You know, I don't know. Do you really Jaron, you really think you guys can do all this? Hmm? Yeah, yes and no. Did, did God say? <laughs> God said did, are you we sure? cannot do it apart from him. Bless your hearts. <laughs> but 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 there's that, you know what? No, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Me and my power, I cannot do it. I can do pretty good, but it'll never be, it'll never be right. But whatever man builds, man has to maintain. That's right. And That's Lord a builds scary the house. Thought. Yes. Uh, but it just reminds you that 
that you can't do it without him. We no. cannot. One of the prayers that Jerry and I pray daily, Lord, don't let me walk out that door without you. Mm. Do not let me talk to anybody without you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that bites me in the rear end, but that's okay. I'd rather have it like that. Yes. Uh, and you'll, you'll find that when, when, you, when you approach life that way, that things come together that you never planned on. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can walk with that son of God swagger. Because you know you hear from the Lord. You got it. And you know he's going to redirect your steps. There's, there's a point where it comes, becomes more about um, a journey with God than mm -hmm. like right and wrong and doing something, you know, imperfection or that your pursuit is all about God, I choose you. Right. And knowing he will redirect your steps. Right. And it's, and it's not arrogance per se. No. But it, the confidence that comes with knowing that not only, not only are we offspring of the creator of the universe, we're, we're joint heirs mm -hmm. with the Lord who saved us. Amen. But the host of heaven goes before us, walks with us, and follows behind us. Amen. That right there. It, it should, anyway, <laughs> give you a shot in the shorts that says, you know what? Whatever the Lord says, it's going to get done. Mm -hmm. and it's going to get done right, and it's going to be done in perfect timing. And I'm going to get out of his way. I'm going to get out of my way mm -hmm. and not think too much or try to make too much happen. Now, we do, have, we, do have, we do have to move when he says to move on something. We can't, we can't wait on heaven to fall down on mm -hmm. us. Correct. And we cannot wait for... You know, well, the Lord said so. Well, and there's times, I don't know how many times you and I, I mean, just in true honesty, have just sat before God and gone, we have done all we know to do to mm -hmm. pursue you and the word you have spoken over us. And so now we give it back to you and we just thank you for bringing it to pass. I mean, mm -hmm. there's literally nothing more we can do to bring this word to pass. And that, to me, is that balance of, of pursuing God versus pursuing a word, but yet at the same time, it's knowing in your heart it's still coming to pass. It's still mm -hmm. coming true. That hasn't changed. There's just nothing you can do about it. Right. And so you move. You go. You keep going. And But again, you have there's that excitement that, you know what, we are, we are joined together. We mm -hmm. are partnered with. We are part of what goes on in heaven. Amen. Right here in the earth. Amen. And it's, it's a happy day. Uh, if nothing else, we've got his word. We have his written word. We have, we have those things that, that, hello, John, from one promised land to another. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, uh, we have those reminders, and, and it's in his word. And the Lord says, you know what? If you think I can't do it, then it can't be done. But if you believe me, it, you'll, be, you'll do it, and it'll be done right. Uh, Whenever I get wound and go and get overwhelmed with, oh man, you know, is this really going to happen? The Lord, time is short, and, and and the Lord has to grab me, and I have to, I have to sit still, I have to be quiet, which is hard for me to do, but I can, and I do it. And I've gotten better. Is where he he reminds me and says, look, remember when I told you this? Remember this day? Remember this time with this person? Remember what they spoke? Remember, I spoke that through them. Mm -hmm. And yes, sir, I remember. Yes, sir. And meditate on it. Let it let it do its work. And you say, you know what? We got this. Amen. We've well got said. This. We've got this. Well said. So as you were talking, just the picture I saw was even like to announce, I mean, when the host of heaven sang in the skies over Jesus' birth. Mm that same host of heaven still exists and sings over us. I mean, it announced the King of Kings and Lord of Lords coming yeah. to this world and coming to this physical earth because of the love of God. Yeah. But yet at the same time, that hasn't changed. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the Lord of hosts and the, the angel armies still sing and resonate over you. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. The war between God and man is over. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry.
But just, but out. just remember that picture, especially this holiday season. Just remember that picture that the host of heaven is singing over you. And you know, you can ask, you know, what are they singing? And in my mind, what they're singing is that perfect resonance mm -hmm. of of heaven that just resonates with the Creator in you. Amen. Kind of that we all look for that place called there, and to me, that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. And so, as the host of the army of God is singing over you, the host of heaven, just bask in that. And just like Jeff said, just marinate in it and let it just impermeate every soul and fiber and or cell and fiber of your being. All of it. Amen. And a little side note here. When we do walk through those times of darkness, and none of us like walking through it because it hurts, it's painful, know that the Lord is with us. Psalm 18 says it is, David said it in there a couple of times. He made darkness mm -hmm. his secret place. There is that heavenly darkness, the clouds, yes. But when we're at our lowest, uh, in my case, that's when I've heard him the clearest. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, he's in the darkness with us. And he's, and, he's, and he's holding on to us. And it's in those places where our dreams and, and our night visions and, and every little thing can be a stimulus mm -hmm. for what the Lord is trying to tell, yeah. what he's trying to speak, what he's trying to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, was, there was a song from long ago when I was going through a, a divorce and stuff. And, you know, you're feeling sorry for yourself. And woe is me. And... But the Lord brought that whenever that song was hot and probably there's a line in it that says, you know, it may all come together, it may all become unraveled on the road less traveled. I'll take that road less traveled. Mm -hmm. It's already been marked, but I'm going to take it because it's a narrow way. It's, a, yeah. it's the way that leads to the Lord. And it's these places of remembrance and these, these things are keys to keeping us moving forward, to keeping us focused, to keep the vision alive, mm -hmm. our visions, visions in so many cases. Mm -hmm. You know, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? I want to be everything I was meant to be, mm -hmm. even now, well, at this stage. And I know for us, well, that's impossible. You're right, it is. We serve the God of the impossible, so why would we do something we could do on our own? And I think that's even a lot of the times what reminds us this as much as we want some of the things to come to pass in our lives that God has spoken over us, we can't do anything about them. We no. just keep going, okay, God, what's our next step? God, don't let us miss you. And to quote a, a pastor friend of ours, he was like, you're not going to miss God because you don't want to miss God. Right. So trust in that relationship and the fact that he's always pursuing you just as much as you are pursuing him. Yeah, sorry, I was getting caught up in that yeah. for a moment. <laughs> Forgive me. No, you're good. But it's it's just a beautiful thing in this place of remembrance. So just to encourage each one of you to 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 know what the first you have to know the voice of the Lord. Second, you have to remind yourself what the voice mm -hmm. of the Lord has said to you. Right. Whether it be written words that you journal or whether it be visual things that you place as mile markers or remembrances um, or just going, you know, Holy Spirit, remind me. Remind me what the Lord has said. Remind me, because so many times too, especially waiting for a word to come to pass for so long, you put your own filter on it. You put your own twist on it. And so it kind of becomes tainted. Yeah. So you have to go back to that secret place of, God, what did you really say? Mm -hmm. Versus what, what do I remember that you said? Right. And that's that's another layer of when the Lord says, don't move the ancient boundaries. Mm -hmm. In other words, I spoke this to you. Don't yeah. add to nor take away from it. Don't move it. Amen. Because that, that is your path and that's your marker. Amen. Um, there's, there's lots of scripture about places of remembrance. Mm -hmm. And more than anything, even, even when we take what we call communion or the Lord's Supper, the Lord said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of our covenant together. And what is covenant? What's mine is yours, what's yours mm -hmm. is mine. And we have that ability. So every time we take communion, it is a grand and glorious thing because it's not only a reminder of the Lord's love for us, and it's a reminder of, of, of what the Lord Jesus walked through and went through mm -hmm. on our behalf. It's also what we receive out of it. Yeah. Every time, every time. Mm -hmm. No, very true. 
So very, very true. With that, um, little little business note here. Uh, we will be live a week from today, a little earlier than we were today, because somebody has an appointment hmm. <laughs> at midday, but that's that's beautiful and I'm happy for it. Um, but we'll be we'll be live next Saturday for our Merry Christmas broadcast, mm -hmm. if you will. Just just share some things and, and as we always do, just speaking blessing. And anything else add to take away? Uh, just our heart for you to walk away with today is to remember. Remember what the Lord your God has spoken over you. Remember what he's spoken to you. Remember your identity. Remember who he said you are. And in those times of darkness and confusion, you run to him. You let him, the word, be your light. The word is a lamp into your feet and a light into your path. And so if you're in a dark place, go back to who he is. Go back to his word. Spend time just letting the word wash over you. And like Jeff so beautifully illustrated, just marinate every part of you to kindle that fire and to kindle that, that momentum and that passion mm -hmm. and that just remembrance of what the pursuit is all about. Life happens, and sometimes life gets hard. And so, yeah, it happens. <laughs> so hear from God. Hold on to his word. In times of confusion or darkness, go back to the simplicity. All right, God, what did you say? Who are mm -hmm. you, and what am I supposed to be doing? I'll say you. Amen. And, of course, we never like to leave without blessing Amen. one another. Yes. So if you will begin, my love. So... First Chronicles 29, beginning in verse 10. This is our foundation scripture for this, us personally. This is what God, what, when we had a dear sweet friend of ours tell us to get on Facebook and that this was a great ministry platform. Mr. Mighty man of God. Yep, Mr. Donnelly. And um, this is what the Lord spoke to Jeff and I. He said, this is what you are to proclaim. You are to proclaim my, bring my impossibility to reality to people. Right. So, O oh Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, may you be praised forever and ever. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power, the glory and the victory, the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on the earth is yours. O oh Lord, and this is your kingdom, O oh Lord, and we adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honor come from you alone, and for you rule over everything. Yes, sir. Power so and mighty are in your hand, and at your discretion, people are made great and given strength. God, we thank you and we praise your glorious name. But, and so, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We Amen. thank you for your greatness, and we thank you that, lack of better terms, you're a superhero. You and encapsulate every superpower that there is mm -hmm. that we need to operate in our lives, and we thank you, we praise you for that <clears throat> impossibility me. being possible. Amen. Forgive me, warm beverage there for the cough. So, in the name of blessing one another, Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 27. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and he be gracious to you. Mm -hmm. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And because we are called by his name, we are blessed. May the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. And according to Colossians chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, may we be fully pleasing to God, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in his knowledge. May we be strengthened with all power from his might for endurance and patience with joy. And our, our personal blessing to all of you, May the treasuries and vaults of heaven be open to you, that you walk in all the goodness and all the glory and all the fullness and strength of God. And may the wealth and riches of heaven and earth mm -hmm. be continually be at your may may they be continually at your disposal. And just a little extra that, that we that we decided to do today is is the uh, the Gaelic blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Thank you for your time, everybody. 
those of you that have stayed with us live and those who will be on catch up later, we thank you. Uh, it, it sounds generic to say, oh, we love each and every one of you, but we, but we do. Mm -hmm. And we, and we try to try to answer you as, as quick and at least with something. I know I've been a little slow lately, but well, I think things are increasing. And so hallelujah for that. Amen. We're excited for all of our tomorrows while we live in the present of today and pursue the, the dreams that God's placed in our hearts. Amen. So just dwell with him in all things, knowing that he has every power in this world to accomplish what he has spoken over you. Amen. So on that, we will see you next week. Enjoy mm -hmm. the week. Enjoy time with family and, yes. and in the preparations for Christmas and New Year's. Have fun with it. Mm -hmm. Don't let things stress you out. No. It's, it's not worth it. Because, it. because guess what? We get to do it again next year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and for those of you who may be alone, just know you're never truly alone. Love you, Teresa. And so know that God has given you a network and a family um, in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so even though you may not have... Um, physical family around you or physical friends around you, you are blessed with the family of God. Thank you, Tish. So anyway, on that note, love you all. We will see you next week. Thank you. Have a great week.